Welcome back. Now let's talk about how you can write your own contract in Scylla. As is customary with most programming languages, you start with a hello world program. So for Scylla, we'll write a hello world Scylla contract. First, we need to understand some key concepts before we actually do the coding work. So in this video, we'll cover those key concepts. And in the next video, we'll actually do the coding work. So first, we'll talk about variables in Scylla. Variables in Scylla can either be immutable or mutable. All variables are initialized when the contract is deployed. Immutable variables, as the name suggests, cannot be modified, whereas mutable variables can be modified with a transition. Now, what is a transition? We'll come to that in just a few moments. An example of an immutable variable is underscore this underscore address. And an example of a mutable variable is underscore balance. These are implicit variables and these are not defined by the user, but they come by default uh, with the contract and underscore this underscore address refers to the contract address and that doesn't change after the contract is deployed. Underscore balance refers to the amount of zil that is being held in the contract and that can obviously change as someone sends zil to the contract. The syntax for defining an immutable variable is the following. We have this two brackets and you, you have, uh, you specify the variable name first and then you specify the data type. And for a mutable variable, we use the keyword field and then we have the variable name, the data type, and then we can initialize the variable as well. And we'll come to this, how, how this can be actually used in a contract by when we look at the hello world contract in the next video. Now let's move to expressions and statements. So expressions are pure operations. They are pure logical operations. And whereas statements are operations with side effects. Expressions in Scylla don't end with semicolons, whereas statements do. An example of an expression is defining variables, functions, etc. And in state for statements, it example includes storing fields, invoking procedures, and so on. So for example, if you are defining a global constant in, in the contract, that's just an expression. Whereas say you are ch changing the value of a mutable variable or you are invoking a procedure, which, which is sort of like an internal function in a contract. We'll come to this in just a few moments. That's a statement. So the syntax of writing expressions can be seen here. So we have this example of say defining a constant, let one equal to in 32 one. So this is usually done in the library part of the contract. Uh, we'll actually define a similar constant in, in our hello world contract. So we'll come to this again. And we have this match expression, which is similar to if or else or switch statements in other programming languages. And this is a match expression. This, uh, this is also an expression. Again, we'll come to this in the next video. Then we have these other examples as well for expressions. For statements, one example is if say your contract accepts QA from a message, QA refers to, is the smallest amount that can, uh, that's denoted in Zill. So for example, for Bitcoin, it's one Satoshi, for Zill, it's one QA. And similarly for match, when we say have a match pa expression, if there's a match with say pattern one, there's a match between X and pattern one, then there will be some statement that would be executed. That's another example. For example, three that's mentioned here, the syntax of how you read a contract field to a local variable. So reading a mutable variable of the contract and storing that in a local variable that is local to a transition. So that's the syntax that we use for that. And for updating a mutable field, the syntax used is this. Again, this, this we'll cover in the next video, but it's good to know about this beforehand. Now let's talk about transitions and procedures. You might have heard about transition and procedures quite a few times in, in the previous slides. Transitions and procedures are quite similar to functions that are seen in other programming languages. The difference between these two is transitions can be called from the outside by other user accounts and contracts, whereas procedures are internal to the contract. They can be called within transitions, but they can't be called from the outside. And the reason why we use procedures is they allow us to reuse our code. So one procedure can be used in multiple transitions. Okay, so they define business logic and they include 
mostly state changes uh, in the contract and uh, they come with implicit arguments like underscore sender for for transition specifically underscore sender represents the account the uh, the address of the account that is calling the transition underscore amount and and some user defined arguments uh, that can be given to a transition and they don't have any return values but they can emit events messages and errors so we'll come to events and messages in just a few moments the syntax of writing a transition is as follows transition we first use the keyword and then we have the transition name f00 foo in this ex for in this example then we we use two brackets uh, opening and closing brackets and we specify the arguments for the transition so for the arguments first we need to mention the argument name then the data type of the argument and then uh, we we can have multiple arguments in our transition for a procedure the syntax is quite similar instead of the transition keyword we use the procedure keyword and we first mention the for the arguments we first mention the argument name then the data type of the argument and both the transition and procedure they end um, using the end keyword the invocation of a transition can be um, from from by a user account or it can be, they can be invoked by another contract using uh, send and they can use messages um, we'll come to this in in later videos how you can invoke a transition of another contract for procedures the invocation is like this we have the procedure name and v1 v2 here refers to uh, the arguments of the procedure so um, in this example we only have one argument so it would be say foo v1 uh, v1 would then um, the, will basically the value of v1 would be uh, equated to v v name underscore one in this procedure so that's that's how transition procedures work now let's talk about events and messages during a transition messages or events can be sent messages can be sent to other contracts or accounts and events are consumed outside of the blockchain for example say you have a you know full stack application you have uh, a front end and you a user submitted a transition from from that front end he called a transition in a contract now you want to know if transition and the subsequent transaction uh, got confirmed and what happened in in the transition so what you can do is you can use events and you can listen to events outside the blockchain and whenever say an event related to your transition um, got called you can you can see okay what was emitted in the transition and you can update your users uh, front end accordingly so that's sort of like the use of uh, events coming to the syntax that we'll use for sending a message you can find that on the left side um, we'll look at this again in our future videos when we look at an example of sending a message through a contract now coming to events on the right side of the screen you can see that we have this variable e and we have curly braces and this variable e needs to have this property event name this is required for for an event variable and uh, here we specify the name of the event which is usually the name of the transition um, in which the event is being invoked and uh, this is sort of like a unique identifier for the event so that when you are listening for events in the contract you can identify, identify which event um, is being referred to and this event variable can it can have other properties as well as you can see here we have entry 2 um, entry 3 and so on but uh, event name is is mandatory and to finally emit the event we use the keyword event and then we pass this variable e Okay, so this covers the main concepts that we need to talk about before writing the Hello World contract. If you have any questions, you can join our developer groups. Um, the, our developer groups are on Discord and Telegram. You'll find the links down below. If you have any confusion or if you want to see what's getting updated, what, what's new, um, what are some grant or bounty opportunities or you need some help with your code, just join those groups and we'll respond to you ASAP. Okay, see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.